So what we're going to look at here today is how we can use the Nano VNA to figure out what uh, frequency this antenna was built for. This is uh, your coffee can antenna and um, I bought a whole bunch of stuff from a ham radio estate sale a long time ago and um, there's no labeling on this thing except when it, the coffee was made but uh, otherwise I don't know what uh, frequency this is set for, what frequencies I guess you could say. And the, uh, there's an amateur radio band that starts at 2300, um, 2300 megahertz and that amateur radio band also overlaps the Wi-Fi band partly. So um, it could be any place in here basically but probably cut for the Wi-Fi from back in the day. But uh, a terrestrial ham radio well, you might be in here someplace and there's some satellite from 2400 to 2450 the sa amateur radio satellite uh, overlaps part of the Wi-Fi band. So we're going to use the Nano VNA here um, to have a look and see what what we can see. And uh, if you take a look down inside the antenna you can actually kind of get an idea of where you're at by just doing some measurements figuring out how far this an the antenna itself which is a piece of 14 gauge uh, household wiring looks like and uh, it's a certain distance from the back wall and it's a certain length but when you get up to these frequencies a very small amount of um, length difference here can make quite a difference in how this antenna is tuned so I'm doing this inside of a house so it's got a lot of reflections and that sort of thing here so I'm going to move the coffee can over to one side and uh, try and aim it towards uh, nothing basically if we had nothing but there's always just it's aiming out the door of more or less what it's doing and then we're going to take a look at the uh, at the nano VNA here and I'll zoom in on this guy and uh, we'll see what it tells us on the screen here and here's how we have it hooked up um, we have a directional coupler here this guy is made for 2.6 to 5.2 gigahertz so I would imagine it was probably used once upon a time for the 4 gigahertz band but uh, it, it starts at 2.6 gigs and we're working down at 2.3 and 2.4 but for us it's going to be fine it'll, it'll work well enough and here's how we have it hooked up out of the VNA here we have our output port and here's our output port here and so it's going to send a signal out and through the um, through the directional coupler here and this is going to head over towards the antenna and then whatever energy doesn't get radiated by the antenna is going to come back in this direction well we don't want it necessarily uh, we don't want the ports to cross talk to each other so we're going to take that sample and we're going to aim it over towards the input side of our VNA the uh, the loss through here from this port to that port is very low and the coming back in this direction is 20 20 dB down for whatever appears here but from here the signal coming in on this side going over this way there's a lot of loss over here probably 40 dB or more going in this direction here so we're not going to see much of the output of this coming back into the input side of here the input side is basically only going to see uh, the stuff that comes back from the uh, from the antenna itself that didn't get radiated from it so let's have a look on our our nano VNA screen here and I'll, I'll zoom in a bit and uh, we'll take a closer look at that so you can see here that I have the nano VNA set for a start frequency of 2200 megahertz and a stop frequency of 2700 megahertz we can see where our dip is right here so I'm going to grab the cursor here and I'm going to move it over to that dip and we'll take a reading and we have a look here that it's at about about 2450 megahertz so we can see the 2450 right here that's uh, about it now as I move around a little bit or if I put my hand in front of it like right there, like there that's my hand in front of it uh, you can see it makes quite a difference so this is going to go back and forth a little bit and well, I can move it over even a touch more I suppose and uh, there we go 2456 that's roughly channel 9 in the Wi-Fi band um, so it looks like this was definitely cut for cut for the Wi-Fi band we can see it's actually not too bad even some of the lower frequencies which would be some of the corresponding lower channels Wi-Fi 876 uh, would be 
probably usable with this with this cantenna. And um, that's the basics of the Nano VNA, just using it for our reflections. And um, if if the antenna radiates uh, the energy away, not much comes back. And that's why we see a dip here. If the antenna is very inefficient, the energy that gets into it at a certain frequency will be radiated back. And that's why our signal level will be much higher. Because the antenna didn't radiate that energy away, it bounced back. Because the antenna is out of tune for these sort of frequencies. So that's return loss. If we have a lot of, if we have a very good return loss, that means it's been radiated off, and uh, in the direction we want it to go. At, hopefully. So we're going to take a look at it on the laptop. I've got a piece of software called VNA-QT, and um, I've got it from the people who make the uh, Nano VNA. It's from nanorfe.com. You can also find it on GitHub if you want to get it that way as well. But uh, it's quite easy to get it downloaded from these folks and uh, when you do be sure to read the instructions because there's a driver that you probably need to put that driver in first if you're running it under Windows uh, it is also good for Linux and other things but um, be sure to read the instructions first before you actually load the program itself in and let's go take a look at that now on the laptop so when we start VNA QT this is what comes up. It doesn't say VNA QT, actually it says VNA view once you get it going. But anyways, uh, one of the first things that we have to do is we have to connect our device, which is our um, Nano VNA, and we gotta connect it to the program itself. You'll see the connections, what's available here for devices to pick. And we are COM7, that yours might come up COM3, COM5, whatever it is, but it'll look a lot, just look, look like this. So we click, connect that one there, and all of a sudden it starts uh, drawing some lines on the screen for us because it's talking to the Nano VNA. And what we want to do here is we want to set some of the parameters because right now it starts at 200 megahertz and goes up to, what, 1470, 1425, whatever. Um, and we know that our CAN is roughly in the 2400 megahertz range. So what we're going to do is we're going to tell the system what the sweep parameters should be because starting at 200 is far too low. So sweep parameters and we're going to go over here to start frequency and we are going to pick uh, let's say what 2500 so let's say 20 for 2400 we're going to go start it with 2300 and over here we're going to take our stop frequency we're probably in the range of 2450 to 25 so let's go 2500 and um, we can have, I think, up to 501 points, but let's pick 400. That's plenty. Uh, the more points you pick, of course, the longer it takes for anything to happen. And uh, we're going to bump our power up a tiny bit here. We're going to go to minus 10 because um, we have a fair bit of loss in our all of our um, sampling here. And we're going to go OK. And it will redraw for us. And you can see here that we start where our 2300 starts. And we go to our 2500 at this end, and there it's getting some uh, good lines on there for us. And we'll wait till that finishes. And we can see the blue line here is our uh, magnitude S11 parameter, which is the VSWR. We can actually go up and change that. Here it says mag S11, but we can still uh, go S11 yet. There we'll call it SW, there it is right there, SWR S11, if you want to do it that way. Notice it draws it to the bottom of the screen here. Here's one here, SWR of 1, here's an SWR of 2. But uh, we're going to leave it at back to the magnitude of S11. And you'll notice that our um, display here, are, it goes from plus 30 over here to minus 80. There's a lot of room on here that's not being used by us at all. We can see that we maybe minus 5 to minus 40 would be plenty, but nonetheless, I'm going to pick 0 to 40. And the way we do that is we go up over here to View. We go to the Graph Limits, because we this is our graph we're talking about. So we're going to go the minimum to minus 40, and we're going to go the max to 0. And our divisions, 
Uh, we could go with four divisions and it would draw it every 10, but let's go with eight divisions and it should give us uh, 5 dB per, per bit here. So there's 0, minus 5, minus 10, etc. Um, so that all fits on there very nicely and we can see our it's still drawing for us it goes it goes back and forth, you know starts at the left and goes across to the right and uh, as i move around inside the room here to get getting different reflections and all um, that's why these that's why the graph is changing now if i put my hand in front of the can there we go that's how bad of a match we have now because it's reflecting a lot back off my hand and if i take my hand away it'll all of a sudden go back to what we would normally expect Obviously, doing this inside of a house is not the greatest. You won't get the best measurements, that's for sure. Um, you'd want to do this outside and face it towards the sky or um, it's towards something any, or away from anything that would reflect off of, let's put it that way. So it looks like our, our the biggest dip we have is right here. So our, our greatest return loss, which is means the best match, is right over here. But we can kind of find out what frequency this is by going down here to the bottom of the screen and dragging this cursor across and we'll see our little our little marker here we got a marker here a marker here and that same marker is the little red dot over on the blue one here and we're going to drag that across until that little marker goes down into the lowest spot on the blue curve and that is roughly the frequency that this antenna should be the the best match at and our frequency is down over here to the left at 2449 so call it 29 2450 uh, megahertz which puts us in the uh, wi-fi band the uh, 2400 megahertz um, wi-fi so uh, this is not cut for amateur radio frequencies really it's cut for the uh, cut for the wi-fi and uh, we can see over on the um, smith chart here right here in the middle that's 50 ohms and if we had a dot right there that'd be a perfect match but we're pretty close